And we're going to go back to the uh, broadcast booth in uh, Anaheim in the Master Broadcast Booth. Baseball Hall of Famer Jim Palmer joins us. Jim, what happened to the bats in the last two games? Well, I felt good. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, uh, you know, I get up. Uh, maybe I'm a morning person. I don't know. I mean, that's what I was accused of uh, when we were reading in the press room. Uh, they did a nice job of pitching. I mean, if you if you take away, and I said this, I don't know what about the eighth inning, take away the grand slam by Machado on actually a pretty good slider that he waffled over the left field fence. They don't score a lot of runs in this entire series. Two for nine uh, yesterday had a chance uh, in a game where they would ultimately lose three to two. But today, uh, again, only the solo home run early on uh, by Castillo. You know, Scribner hit, uh, it, it's almost like, when they used to bring up Tom, they used to bring up young uh, hitters, and you knew they were pretty good fast hitters like uh, Pueyo today, who got his first major league hit, first major league guy. But you could see just seeing pretty good fastball hitter, had maybe trouble with the breaking ball, and you'd mess with him. And that's the way Scribner did to the Oriole lineup. But these aren't young hitters. These are experienced guys that look like they lack patience. And I'll tell you what, Scott Kuba, you know, he does a tremendous job of uh, preparing them uh, for what the opposing pitcher is going to be able to do. But if you don't listen, if you don't use the approach of using the whole field, you see pop ups, you see uh, meaningless at bats, and you see a lot of easy innings. We saw it with Bridwell, and then and we saw it with Scribner, who doesn't have the kind of stuff uh, that Bridwell, who ran his record to 6 and 1 against the Orioles last night. Jimmy, two questions for you, too. What is the best pitch in baseball? And number two, Gosman, who has pitched so well in his last four or five ball games, used the fastball down in a way to dominate offensive teams since he's really been on this streak. Today, for some reason, he decided he wanted to go up and in, first pitch to almost every hitter that he faced today, got behind in the count, and struggled to get back in the count all day long. I don't understand why he would do that. Well, you know, again, I mean, I, you know, and he has been pitched well. I mean, two runs of his last four starts uh, after getting roughed up in two ball games. Uh, you know, one he lost and one he got a no decision. But, you know, again, I, I assume the game plan, I always thought low and away, you know where they're going to hit it. You start from that point, certainly has the capability. And that's one of the reasons he's been as good as he has. And he's also been able to go to the, uh, the glove side uh, to lefties once he gets ahead. But today... What, uh, three of the first five innings they had guys on. And again, uh, it is a little bit more difficult when you don't get a lot of run support. And today the Orioles didn't do a very good job of that. But, you know, we've seen him better. He wasn't horrible. He made one uh, mistake, and that's to C.J. Cron, who, you know, that's what he does. He hits home runs. He's a big free swinger. If you make your pitches, uh, you got to got a chance. And then the rookie, uh, Pueyo, uh, he got his first hit and his first major league RBI on a fastball in the middle of the plate. So, it was a day of living in the middle of the plate, and uh, I don't care who you're playing. Uh, the Angels are a much better team offensively since Trout came back. Bolos took the day off today, but Trout was in the lineup, got a couple of infield hits, and he just makes his whole lineup better. So they had a lot of tough at-bats at today, and they made Kevin work, and they got him out of the game early.